Hello. So, oh, you can see Ernie there. We are still having spoony days. Um, my hair, I did brush it, but it's still a bit like this. I just thought I'd check in because this is supposed to be a weekly reading vlog and I've not been updating you on my reading. So I'm just sat here reading Lycanthropy and Other Chronic Illnesses. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a vlog yet or not, but so far this book is the most chronic illness representing book I have ever read and I actually feel like I'm gonna cry because there's just been a conversation and literally just a few lines about a girl wanting a hysterectomy and having to fight for it and she said that she'd come to peace with the fact that all her uterus gave her was pain and that the doctors just kept going on about how young she was and yeah, I feel like I'm on the verge of tears now because that just brought back a lot for me. But I am loving this book. So I'm going to carry on reading it and hopefully, hopefully I feel well enough to read it. Today I've been awake a little bit more than the past few days since I went to bed Friday night at 6pm, slept through till 10am and did the same Saturday night and then pretty much the same last night which was Sunday night so it's been nice I, I mean I slept until 10 a.m today but I haven't had a nap this afternoon so I'm just waiting for Tom to get home from work and then we're gonna cook some dinner together good morning I realized that in the I was gonna say excitement but that's the wrong word but in the mess of last week I didn't share a DNF with you and this one, okay, so it's my first Jodie Pickle. I've got loads of Jodie Pickle on my shelves. Um, I had the Book of Two Ways from NetGalley. I think that if you're into Egypt and ancient Egypt, you'll enjoy this. But to me, it genuinely felt like I was reading a history textbook and history was my least favorite subject at school. So, yeah, it all, something, I don't know whether it's in the blurb, so I don't want to say if it's a spoiler, but something happens at the very beginning of the book, which makes this woman kind of question her life. But, yeah, it didn't, none of it rang true, and it just... I couldn't I just couldn't so that was a DNF so I've had some really exciting posts the first thing is for a sponsored video that'll be coming on my channel very soon um I'm not going to show you everything that's come but I just wanted to show you this is from Anna Louisa and I've never had kind of posh jewelry before and oh I'm so excited when I open this and I just think that this is the most gorgeous is it going to show up well most gorgeous necklace that I own now so keep an eye out for my Christmas gift guide which will be coming very very soon and then today I haven't even opened it yet because I want you to get the reaction on camera but I've had my classics box this is the November classics box from a book in a cuppa as always links will be below but I just I wanted to show you the joy of opening one of these because Claire who curates these boxes put so much thought into them I'm not gonna be able to open it gracefully now am I can I do this without anything falling out so you always get a card and in the card I generally I'm not going to look at this, but you have all of this, which shows you all the all the different brands that come in it and what you've got. Claire works with a lot of other small brands, which is fantastic. And then the box itself, I love getting into these. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, so... 
the theme for the, you always know what the book's going to be this is dr jekyll and mr hyde so i've got some nib nibs coconut mini biscuits i've got the most amazing looking hot chocolate spoon does it say it doesn't have a flavor it just says potion hot chocolate but look at that oh my god i then have test tube a and test tube b i will have a look at the notes in a bit but i do believe that they are probably bath salts <laughs> i have a petri dish with a wax melt in it and i need to show you this look how cool that looks oh that smells gorgeous very subtle but sweet does it say a flip? again it's probably on my thing you'll have all seen it but i didn't look at the spoiler card and then oh wow <laughs> i have this little potion thing and a pipette always important and then another test tube i'm not going to get it out of the bubble wrap right now and then the book always comes oh that's a gorgeous bookmark in each of us two natures are at war the good and the evil you always get a penguin classic edition book which is in here i'm not going to open this now because i want to keep it like this for instagram but the bookmark is gorgeous as well so i just i just love the classics box I haven't read any of the classics that I've been sent yet. That is on my to-do list, but what does it say on here about the... So, the quote bookmark is designed by a book in a cuppa herself. You can have tea, coffee or hot chocolate. I've gone for the hot chocolate because I love a hot chocolate. So that is from Chunky Dunk Chocks. Um, so the Petri dish wax melt in Hocus Pocus is also designed by a book and a cuppa. Flask is Bubblegum Millions. Gonna eat them soon. The, oh, hello. Test tube blue raspberry potion, which must be this one, contains vodka. It's a blue raspberry vodka shot. So yes, I am, I am up for that. And then the, the test tubes both contain bath salts and pomodoro gift ideas bath dust and yeah it says to really get the full experience while reading please check out the dr jekyll ambience on autumn cozy channel on youtube so i will do that do as i'm told so that's it for now i will update you when i read anything else and yeah i'm slowly getting there slowly feeling a bit more human need to tackle actually getting dressed at some point and hopefully i'll be back at work and on my feet soon maybe i've been going nowhere lately it's time to start all over and go for it cause they don't even they don't even know me yet but that's something i don't regret every night i close my eyes and see only lavender dreams baby what can i do when a million things are running through million things i can't undo i just sleep walk i just sleep talk that's all i got what can i say with a million things i can't erase million people i can't save i just sleep walk i just sleep talk So, you're joining me in my bed because that's a normal thing to do. Just reading Lycanthropy and Other Chronic Illnesses. And I don't know why I'm leaning like this, but I realised that I didn't share this with you the other day. And it's not a spoiler, it's part of the like dialogue between this chronic illness group. And it just described the way that I feel on and off and so 
yeah I thought I think sometimes when we talk about suicide and suicide ideation it's really hard because people get either upset that they think you're saying that you're actively you know going to do something or they'll say things like oh but look at all the things you've got going for you and everything and this I still find this quite hard to talk about but just listen so somebody had said like that you know um so first of all she says with your body it's like you're in this apartment and it's a shitty apartment the ceiling is caving in and it's infested with rats and you have to step around like holes in the floor or whatever and other people have like beautiful perfect houses and all you want to do is move but you can't and then so they'd asked if she's okay um, and somebody else had put but I also don't want to keep living in this body that is in pain 24 7 and then she put I don't want to be dead really I just want to be like briefly not alive I'm okay that's not what I meant exactly do you ever just want to take a quick coma like maybe for a month just to recuperate and I think this is something that I felt a lot, especially over the last couple of years with how I am with my chronic illness. I'll be fine, well, not fine, but fine for me. And I'll be going about my daily day to day stuff and I'll be resting and I'll be eating well and I'll be doing all those things. And I get to a point where I'm just tired of having this body and I just want to like power down for a bit or like hibernate for a little bit so yeah thought that was really good i'm this far in now so i guess i'm gonna finish this one in the next day or two dreams baby what can i do when a million things are running through million things i can't undo i just sleep walk i just sleep talk that's all i got what can i say with a million things i can't erase million people i can't save i just sleep walk i just sleep talk don't wanna wake up Sunday evening you can hear my bath running that is just a thing I absolutely bloody love it when I have a Sunday off and today has been one of those like Sunday done right I basically didn't move from the sofa for 90% of the day unless it was to cook to eat to go to the toilet or I had to pop and sort Nana's pills out for her so just wanted to check in with you. I finished three books this week and the first of those was Ali Smith's Autumn and I really enjoyed this book. I'm not, <laughs> I was going to say clever enough, I don't know. A lot of 
kind of literary fiction stuff goes over my head and there were bits of this like i don't know who christine keeler is i'm gonna have to research that one because there's a lot about christine keeler in here but ignoring those bits i just thought that ali smith perfectly captured the mood around brexit and autumn and just yeah really really enjoyed that one i gave it a four star rather than a five because like i said there were quite a few bits that went straight over my head but i'm looking forward to moving on to winter soon i then read jamie adnam's christmas at the north pole which was sent to me via net galley and i am really really torn by this one because this was a five star most of the way through. I've said before, if I'm reading a Christmas book, I want it to be smack me around the face with a fistful of tinsel festive. And this was, this was, Amy Herrick to get a message from her dad. Her dad's been traveling. So she's kind of not that into Christmas because her dad always promised that he'd come home for Christmas and never did. So she's learnt not to get her hopes up. But she gets a call from him to say that he needs her to come and help him out because he's had a heart attack and he's living on this remote um, place near the North Pole. And yeah, so she goes to help him and just the descriptions of Christmas and everything. I was about, I'd got to about 65% through and I was like, this is going to be a five star. However, there was then this chapter oh boy right so i don't know how to talk about this without giving spoilers i don't think it is a spoiler because you learn early on that tav the love interest has got these scars that he doesn't talk about and our main character sasha sasha I believe it's Sasha. I've told you before, I'm rubbish with names. Keeps alluding to seeing these scars and wondering what his story is. And then when he tells her, I think it was really, really obvious that this was written by someone that was able-bodied because it was very much the kind of inspiration porn that he'd left his family because he needed to get through this on his own. And I just... There was just a lot about it that really put me off and then after that i just couldn't stop thinking about it and it was like oh this big strong guy was left weak after this accident and had to fight his way back to strength and <sighs> it's just society's descriptions of disabled people and I just didn't like it. It's that kind of inspiration porn thing. Like, look at him, look how well he's done. I don't know. It just left a really sour taste in my mouth. So I've given that a three star overall because it just couldn't come back from that after that for me because I just kept thinking and thinking about that. And I don't necessarily think that the author meant it to come across that way. I mean, I don't know. I'm not the author, but I loved her book last year. So this one, yeah, really disappointed me because of that. I'd love to know if anybody else has read it and what you think, because I think sometimes, like I know that I read Me Before You and loved it. And it wasn't until Olivia Savannah talked about how problematic it was that it made me open my eyes and go, oh shit, yeah, yeah, that is really problematic. So I don't know. I'd just like to know if anybody else has read it and what they think. I'm not... Yeah, I just don't want to talk about the book anymore. It's one of those that it it left such a sour taste in my mouth and put me off so much that I'm just like, I'm done with it. And then the last one I read, in complete contrast to that, was The Silent House by Nell Patterson. I picked this up in a charity shop because I have... the. I have Silent Night, which I started reading last year and then realised it was the second in a sequ sequel. Um, second in a sequel? Second in a series. So this is the Paige Northwood series and I believe that the books can be read in any order, but I like to read them in order. Now this was brilliant. This 
as it says there's someone in your home but you can't hear them and this is set in the deaf community and i read was it in the back of here or was it in the front the author herself oh yeah it's here so so Nell Patton has been a teacher and specialised in deaf education. She's been teaching in the deaf community for 12 years in both England and Scotland. Nell began losing her hearing in the 20s but still refuses to wear hearing aids. This is her debut novel and wow. I don't think there's many thrillers with good disability representation. I know that Jen Campbell's talked about a few and I am going to hopefully get to them in the future. But I think generally in thrillers, disability and disfigurement and things like that are used as plot points to kind of make you scared of someone. Or there's that trope that I hate of the woman with the mental health issues so nobody believes her. Whereas this, the fact that it was set within the deaf community added an extra layer to it, as in Paige, our main character, is hearing and her sister is profoundly deaf. She deals with the stereotypes that come from the police and she's an interpreter, so she... Big trigger warning in this for death of a child. That happens right at the beginning. That's not a spoiler and actually it's on the blurb but this can be hooked the whole way through despite the fact that I knew who the killer was pretty early on and I think for a I'm really getting into these kind of police crime mystery ones where obviously I can work it out and it didn't matter that I knew who'd done it that didn't spoil the plot in any way for me because there were still little things that I hadn't pieced together and I just thought the representation in this was great. Obviously, I'm not an Own Voices reviewer. But yeah, I gave it on five star. And I really just want to move on to Silent Night now. So I might just do that. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. I feel like I'm slowly getting back to... <laughs> I wanted to say full health. Full health for me. Um, my aches and pains are going down, my fatigue's going down, my IBS is still giving me trouble, I've got to go for some more blood tests, but we're back on an even keel for now, and with that, my mental health picks up. I have spent most of the week just doing little things. I came across this brilliant um, video about pacing with a chronic illness and people were doing things like 30 minutes of housework, two hours of rest and old me would have been like, nope, not doing that, pushing myself through. And actually my house is the cleanest I think it's been in years. So there's definitely some merit to that. Next week, I am going to my parents' house for a couple of days, so that should be fun. Don't know how much of it I'll film, and I'm going to try and finish up some of these books because I don't want to take any over into December. I'd really like to finish November on an even keel. This week is Aoife's Barkalong Readathon, and I've got a couple of books that I want to read from that. So I hope you are all well, and until next time, look after yourselves. Bye.